tonight. What do Twitter, Twitch, and toilet paper have in common? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 300 for Monday, March 23rd, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies is the most comfortable and hip underwear you'll ever wear. Check out all the styles and get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash twit. Welcome back. I'm Megan Maroney. Have you taken our annual audience survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey and tell us what you think. The survey is anonymous, and we really want to know what you think so we can make this and all the other Twitch shows better. Now let's get to today's news. Twitter began to roll out a new feature designed for verified users. It's called the Quality Filter, and its mission is to automatically hide offensive tweets from your timeline. Here to talk to us about this and a few other of the tech stories he's covered this week is Owen Williams from The Next Web and from The Future. Welcome, Owen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how you going? I am good. So how did you hear about this new feature? Uh, so a bunch of people uh, started tweeting that they got a uh, notification, I suppose, about uh, this this quality filter thing. And uh, the more we looked into it, we're like, whoa, this is actually a, a really huge deal. Uh, you know, Twitter's been saying for a while that um, they're going to improve their abuse uh, kind of tools. But this is like next level. It's, it looks pretty awesome if it works the way it <laughs> says it does at least. Right. So it's it's so it's not it's just rolling out slowly. Only a few people have gotten it, but when yep. you get you the people who have received it, they've gotten a notification and then they can turn yep. it off or not. Yeah, so uh a couple of us at the next web have got it and then others don't. So uh it seems to be only rolling out to verified users at the moment, which was which is a bit disappointing because it would be kind of one of those things that would be useful across the whole platform as as you can imagine. Um, but I suspect that they probably want to get it right. Uh, it's, it'll be interesting if they're automatically like picking up these tweets now or if they're relying on other people to flag them still because if, if they're doing it automatically, that's a huge leap forward from what they used to be able to do. Right. Well, so it'd be nice. Exactly. A verified user, in, in case people don't know, it's someone that's relatively famous in some way that Twitter has <laughs> said they are who they say they are, correct? Yep. And no one yep. can – are you a verified user? Yep. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, it's it's funny because when you get verified, they kind of send you an email and they're like, "Ah, uh, just fill in this like five step survey and asks you like really mundane stuff about how like how to use Twitter, <laughs> and then you're verified." So, right, it's sort of mysterious. I mean, you can't ask to be verified. It's some that's kind right. Of secret, you know, organization type thing. They just decide. Yeah, it's like a gated community. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, we've been hearing a lot about certain features that Twitter is adding, um, you know, things that they don't let anonymous people who've lost their account come back. You know, they, they're not allowed to use anonymous web browsers like Tor. T Tor. I mean, yeah. and all along we're like, well, well, okay, well, we'll see how that works. I mean, this seems like something that really has teeth behind it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I think it does. The, um, I think there will be a lot of uh, concern from some people over how how, the, how it kind of decides what's offensive. Like, does Twitter, and we don't know this yet, do they run an algorithm over tweets that's like, hey, every tweet that has a swear in it, that, that's an offensive tweet? Or are they relying on people to say, hey, this is an offensive tweet? Or <laughs> there's all sorts of possibilities. So it's, it's really awesome if it's implemented right. If it's not, it could actually be a, a mess, I think. Um, and it's hard, I mean, it's hard to say. I don't have people tweeting me a lot of abuse yet, so <laughs> don't please don't tweet me abuse. But <laughs> um, I, you know, so I don't know if it, if it works or not. But it'll be interesting to see how it goes over the next few weeks if yeah. it actually helps people. Yeah, I mean, it is because I mean, how people define abuse. I mean, it's the same way people define pain. I mean, so, you know, I've said before, yep. people tweet things at me like I have weird eyebrows. You know, I talk funny, things like that. I get that, and it's really? like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> really. Wow. <laughs> and I get it, and I'm like, oh, well, you're listening, you're watching. Thank you. You know, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> something that it's not it's not near what people get you know what right. a lot of women get 
uh, abusive, threatening, you know. So it's like that stuff doesn't bother me. I usually block them, but, you know, it's, it's not really like I need someone, you know, I don't need, tw you know, Twitter going through yeah. and deciding what's offensive to me and what's not, so. I think that's why it's good that it's opt-in. Like if it was, if it was opt-out, it would probably be a bit more of a problem, you know. It's... Uh, <laughs> But it's, it's really interesting because the old feature, you could turn on like there was like a filtered thing and it would kind of get rid of them, but you would still get notifications uh, about those tweets. So it was kind of pointless. And the, the new one seems to actually block the notifications as well on your phone, which is kind of nice Right. if you're in one of those situations. Exactly. Well, I should also say that people also tweet very nice things at me. Also, it's not all bad. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you covered some other breaking news today. Apparently, Twitch accounts were compromised and everyone's passwords were reset. That that happened yeah. this morning. Yeah, it was. So this is pretty nuts. I um I was kind of looking into it. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, you know like... It's almost like, oh, yeah, another day on the internet, uh, services have been compromised. And I, I know that's a bad way to think about it. But um, until until I saw the email they actually sent out to people, and I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty serious. Like, uh, in the email, they say uh, they may have accessed your email address, your password, the last IP address you logged in, and your first and last name, your phone number, address, and date of birth if you gave us those. And that's like, Oh boy, <laughs> that's a lot of information. Um, particularly when you think about uh, there's that trend lately, the the swatting kind of trend where people call out the police to your house uh, for some ridiculous reason, and you get swatted. And uh, that kind of information being out there doesn't help those people in that kind of scenario in any sort of way. Uh, so it's a bit worrying. Right. Yeah, because I mean, the swatting happens in the gaming community often, and that, that's, yep. it's interesting in this sense, uh, you know, they say that their credit card information wasn't exposed. All of it wasn't. Almost all yep. of it, but, no, but not all of it. So in this case, it's, it's like that doesn't even really matter. I mean, if you have your, you know, personal details out there, that could be worse in this situation. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it worries me in that regard. I was actually, when I was looking into this story, and it could be totally uncorrelated, but on the um, Twitch subreddit, there was a guy saying, hey, yesterday I got swatted and like, I don't understand how they got my phone number and an email address and all this stuff. And I'm like, hmm, that's a bit interesting timing. I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to correlate, but this stuff really does happen. And like, there are people out there who will do that with their information. So it's, we, I mean, we don't know how much they actually got of it because you know the languages may have accessed it so uh you know it's not actually clear who has it but uh it's still reason you know cause for concern i definitely think right and so and all twitch users automatically got their password reset they weren't waiting yep. for you to do it on your own yeah there were a uh, a bit of a delay in uh, getting the actual password reset emails as well so it was kind of everyone's like oh, i want to stream you know <laughs> when you want to stream and it doesn't work of course you're getting annoyed but <laughs> right yeah. Yeah, it is interesting that they automatically reset them instead of waiting for people to do it themselves. It's it's it's. I think it's good. It, it's a good step forward. I just wish they were a little bit more honest about it on on the blog. Like I understand why you wouldn't be, but the fact that you know, like that email is going to surface eventually. Why not just come clean up front? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so now we get to the most important story uh, that you covered last week: toilet paper. <laughs> you became a bit of an internet expert yep. late last week. Yep. Uh, what happened? Um, <laughs> okay, I'll start. I'll start at the top uh, for those who haven't haven't heard about it. Um, I looked up the patient for toilet paper on uh, Google Patents last week, and I was like, I made this like. Kind of a like a dumb joke tweet. You know what Twitter's like. You just kind of like, oh yeah, ha ha ha. So I made this tweet. It was like, now we consider the argument for over and under or something like that with a picture of the patient. And this thing, like, I went to bed and I was like, oh yeah, this is like no big deal. Uh, <laughs> wake up and I've got like all these emails from uh, news news companies in Australia. Uh, these guys want to interview me about it. And I'm like, suddenly like the, the world's leading expert in toilet paper. And I just... <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the most bizarre week of my life, and my friends were like calling me up, being like, "Oh, I saw. Is this the same Owen Williams as uh, the one uh, <laughs> I'm seeing on Facebook right now in my feed? Like, what the heck's going on?" So I, I literally I conducted a radio interview last week with ABC about this. <laughs> They're like asking me all sorts of weird stuff on air, and uh, it was it was good fun. Now, was <laughs> did they think you were a patent expert or a toilet paper uh, expert? I hope not. <laughs> Um, I think I think that uh, these guys just you know they're looking for an interesting story. Um, I can't I kind of wrote this article about it afterwards because you know like 
it is really interesting because whenever there's two sides of a debate, I mean, be it toilet paper or the dress, um, the color of the dress thing, uh, people people are going to want to argue about it, and that's what gets it shared. And I didn't expect it to go quite as far. Like you make kind of a, an idle tweet, of like a like a dad joke, a little bit. And suddenly it's on, like, you know, basically BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, and you're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it, so was, it was fun. It was the perfect storm. It's like you already have a lot of Twitter followers, and, you know, it's an interesting topic. Who doesn't want to talk about toilet paper? And then oh, yeah, why not? The two sides and, you know, the, the rest is internet meme history until... I think I need to log out. I, I need to delete my account at this point. Like, I'm done on Twitter. <laughs> right. I mean, you didn't get uh, abusive tweets before, but this could be the thing, Owen, that, yeah. that sends you over the edge. I hope not, but... About toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Owen Williams is a writer at The Next Web. Uh, do you have any stories that you're working on next that you can tell us about? <laughs> I just published the last one, so that Twitter one was probably it. The uh, rest are all secret, right? Of course. <laughs> right. <laughs> And you can, of course, uh, follow uh, Owen at, at Ow on Ow. Twitter and <laughs> the next web. Thank you, Owen. Take care. Coming up, the enemy of Microsoft's enemy is Android. And I want Hillary Clinton emojis. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies is the most comfortable and hip underwear that you will ever wear. You need to know about MeUndies, and here is why. We spend 90% of our lives in our underwear. With MeUndies, you can get great-fitting underwear that's two times softer than cotton. MeUndies are the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. Plus, they're stylish. There are so many options, from polka dots, plaid, funky pinstripes, to dozens of colors for both men and women. You can check out the photos yourself at MeUndies.com slash twit. The level of quality... For underwear like this would typically retail at two times the MeUndies price, but there's no retail middlemen or women. That means that you save more. MeUndies fit perfectly and they pull moisture away from your skin so that you stay cool. Having comfortable underwear will change the way you feel every day. Once you try MeUndies, you will never go back. So get yourself some good underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash twit and get 20% off and free shipping on your first order. Save even more when you buy a pack. They guarantee you'll be happy or your first pair is free. That's 20% off when you go to MeUndies.com slash twit. And we thank MeUndies for their support of tech news tonight. And on to a few more stories we're following today. Microsoft strengthened ties with smartphone maker Samsung today by offering Microsoft's productivity services pre-installed on some Android devices. Last month, Samsung announced that OneNote, OneDrive, and Skype will come with the new Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge. Today, the Redmond company said that in the first half of 2015, Samsung is planning to pre-install Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, OneDrive, and Skype on select Samsung and Dell Android tablets. Google would like to make it very clear Google Glass is not dead. Today, Google's executive chairman, Eric Schmidt, told the Wall Street Journal that the reason the company halted the Google Glass developer program is that they're currently getting ready to sell the device to consumers. The journal also reports that Google is looking into pairing the device with more familiar types of eyewear so as to make wearers look less creepy as they stare at you with a camera attached to their face. Now, speaking of staring at you with a camera attached to your face, let the Meerkat bannings begin. Business Insider reports that the live streaming app Meerkat was banned this afternoon at Silicon Valley's Y Combinator's Demo Day. That's a twice a year event where startups preset a specially invited present to a specially invited group of people. Airbnb and Dropbox both got their start at this event, but you will not see it unless you are there because no one is allowed to Meerkat. And I believe that will just be the beginning. And finally, the cover of the New Yorker magazine often nails the current zeitgeist, and they've done it again with the March 30th issue. The cover is festooned with 30 beautiful Hillary Clinton-inspired emojis by artist Barry Blitt as a reference to Clinton's ongoing email scandal and other scandals, I'm assuming. I would like to get these for my own email. How do I do it? That is this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course, watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Recently, I asked you to post your selfies of you watching Tech News Tonight, and we have gotten so 
many. Today's TN2 Selfie Fan of the Day is Andy Laws, who asks us all to support our local YMCA and Twitch, too. It looks like Andy has been burning up those calories on the elliptical at the YMCA while wearing his Fitbit, watching on an iPad, and listening through LG Tone headphones. Great job, Andy. Keep up the good work and keep sending us your selfies. Tag them with hashtag TN2 Selfie. You can put them on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or send them just to us via email at tn2 at twit.tv and tell us a little bit about yourself. We might show your selfie on the show. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.